Hello everybody, welcome to this week's update video. Uh, my name is Martin and I'm an Inkscape developer and I develop features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Welcome to these updates where I talk about uh, the work that I've been up to as some, somebody that is paid directly from users to work on Inkscape on your behalf. And also I talk about some of the things that have been going on in the Inkscape project more generally to keep you informed about some of the developments. Um, as usual, the first thing that I, I want to do is I want to thank all of the people that sponsor my work. Um, it really is a project that is uh, based around people's ability to contribute and get involved and push the project forwards. Um, as you probably know, I've been working on the PDF stuff. Uh, one small thing, I did fix a small bug to do with nudging. Basically, a year ago, somebody committed some code to fix another issue that caused nudging to become, uh, basically, it, it became imprecise. Um, the technical de details are essentially that somebody converted a, a double or a, a digit into an integer, accidentally losing all of the precision. A very easy fix. Um, so the PDF stuff that I've been working on, the whole goal here is to make uh, PDFs that can do CMYK and uh, color management and all of the other stuff that print, print, printing stuff, you know, professional level things are required. And the problem is, is that the um, framework that we're currently using to produce PDFs called Cairo doesn't have that functionality at all. And it's such a complicated uh, library that they don't want to add that kind of color management either. So we're having to build a new PDF exporter from scratch. We're using a library called Cappy PDF as the raw PDF creator, and then having to build all of the uh, translation work, the stuff that SVG needs to be translated into PDFs on top of that. Um, for the past couple of weeks, I've been working on gradients. Uh, this is the ability to produce colors going from one stop uh, color to another. And I was doing quite well. I had linear gradients and um, radial gra gra gradients, and I was working on patch gradients. The problem is, is that the upstream Cappy PDF didn't support uh, pa uh, basically turning the gradients into patterns so that they can be painted into strokes and fills. And this is what you can do in SVG, right? You can make a uh, an SVG uh, gradient apply to a stroke as much as you can make it apply to a fill. So I have to be able to support uh, that format. So it basically meant going upstream and uh, modifying and improving the upstream library Cappy PDF to support pattern-based gradients. Uh, upstream didn't want me to do the work myself, so I'm basically in a holding pattern, uh, so I can't finish that work until that upstream work is completed. Um, so apologies for not being able to actually show you the final product. Um, there was some really interesting things, though, that I discovered. First of all was uh, the way in which uh, PDF doesn't support gradient reflections or con continuous gra gradients where the gradient repeats. Uh, that's something that um, you have to basically engineer around. For this, I actually copied uh, Cairo that produces some really interesting uh, work workarounds to be able to produce the same effect in PDF. Um, so I, I basically stole what they had done. Uh, pretty ingenious stuff, actually. And the second is there's just like subtleties in the way gradients, the functionality of gradients. For instance, I didn't realize that radial gradients had a focal point, um, but they do. And this functionality is completely hidden in Inkscape, like all other good functionality in Inkscape, it's hidden. Basically, if you hold down shift and you uh, drag from the center point of your object, you'll find that there's a little crosshair that moves around. And what you're moving with that is not the center of the gradient. You're moving the focal point of the gradient, which basically changes the way in which the, 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 the radial uh, gradient uh, calculation is done. And you can produce some really interesting effects that are quite different from just a standard radial gradient. Fortunately, PDF does support this, so there's no issue with getting that into uh, PDF land. And um, yeah, just making sure that the, the ICC profile stuff is there, that works well, I'm very happy with that. And uh, yeah, it's just continuing to grind away at, at the, the functionality. More tests, a lot more tests. Trying to improve the test framework as well because uh, Inkscape's CLI-based testing uh, doesn't do multiple pages for SVGs, so it's all a bit of a mess. I can't make it produce multiple images out of an SVG file to compare to the multiple images out of a PDF file that you would need, right? So basically each test is a is an SVG file that gets turned into a PDF file, and there are multiple pages inside of that file. Each one of them needs to be turned into a PNG so it can be compared bit by bit by, by for like 
if it's exactly the same, because the whole goal is to make whatever's in the SVG file, however it looks in Inkscape, uh, be the, exactly the same as it appears in the PDF file, right? Okay, so that's what I've been up to. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to make this video this week actually is because of all of the exciting stuff that's going on in Inkscape itself, and I feel like uh, this is a good opportunity to talk about so, some of those great things. So first of all is Manpreet. Um, he's the contractor that Inkscape has hired to help us finish off the Adobe Illustrator file importer, and he has um, published his report on how far he's getting with that. Um, in that report, he talks about uh, object duplicates inside the format. He talks about some of the style, uh, known styles versus inline styles, and some of the ways in which he's implemented things like stars and other shapes. Um, so basically, you know, trying to make sure that all of the formatting things that are, are done in the AI file, pretty much the opposite of what I'm doing with PDF file, uh, get translated into the equivalent SVG. Sometimes that means you'll end up with something editable, like a star. Um, and sometimes that means that you'll end up with just a path um, so we can show you the same thing, but it might not be editable in the same way. Depends upon the capabilities of the AI file versus the capabilities of Inkscape. Um, another thing of note, which I thought was very interesting, was uh, Tapahong has been working on, essentially he was fixing a bug with an emoji font that um, was causing Inkscape to crash because it was loading the, f the this 12 megabyte file inside the font uh, a couple of thousand times, very bad, with crashing scape, no problem. Um, but the research that he did into it and trying to figure out how to get coloured uh, characters like emoji to appear inside of Inkscape, because right now we don't we don't have emoji support at all, um, has been uh, an interesting one. And we've had a bunch of meetings and we've talked a bunch of stuff about the different formats. There's four different colored font formats because none of the companies involved could agree on a formatting stand standard. So you've got your Apple one, your Microsoft one, your Mozilla one, I forget who the other one, Google one, and they're all different. Uh, some of them are raster files, so basically they're little uh, images inside of the font that you basically blat in at the right places. Some of them are SVG, some of them are vector but not SVG, uh, and the way in which they do colors is different. And of course, if the SVG one was the one that was causing the issue, and uh, Tav has a solution to be able to blit those as raster images, basically the conversion. It's not perfect, but uh, you know now that we understand better about how these fonts are structured and which ones are supported in the wild, hopefully we'll be able to be on a better track to be able to support uh, emojis inside of Inkscape. And especially looking forward to the ones that are SVG based or vector based, because we should, I think, in the future, be able to um, turn those vectors into actual vectors inside of Inkscape. I think that would be kind of fun and useful. And lastly, uh, but certainly not leastly, is the work that Raphael and uh, Adam Bellis have been doing on being able to edit uh, arcs. Now, one of the things that most people don't realize about SVG is that the path for formatting doesn't just have Beziers, it also has arcs. Arcs are basically like pieces of a circle that get incorporated into the outline. When you convert a circle into a path, it actually turns it into four arc segments, uh, not four beziers. And that's because beziers do not represent a circle faithfully. So you, you the, the more faithful way of drawing a circle is with arcs, which is why you want to have arcs as a, as a supported format. Interestingly, PDF doesn't support arcs at all, so they have to be converted to beziers, which means that you lose precision uh, you just have to add more points to make it more precise, but it's PDF is never going to be able to produce a cir circle in the same way that uh, Inkscape can. Um, but in this particular case, we've never had the ability to edit those arcs or those arc segments inside of Inkscape itself. We basically, when you go to edit a path, convert them into Beziers for you uh, transparently. And uh, it, it, the thing is, is like it's actually kind of useful to be able to edit arcs and keep arcs and convert segments into arcs. And so that's what Raphael has been doing. And there's a whole bunch of um, user experience considerations. And that's what Adam has been doing. They've been having meetings. And every man and his dog seem to have joined that merge request uh, and commented on the implementation that Raphael has presented. It's still in draft, but everybody is kind of excited about being able to have this new fun functionality in there. Hopefully, the discussion has been productive. And the functionality that we end up with with ARCs is going to be something special. Um, I'm certainly interested to make sure that we uh, complete the functionality because one of Inkscape's goals, don't forget, is to support SVG 
uh, completely, right? All aspects of SVG, and this includes ARC editing. Um, okay, so that's everything for this week, month, week. Um, thank you for watching and for um, subscribing. Um, if you would like to support my work, help me spend more time uh, on doing the Inkscape work rather than other work, please consider subscribing to my Patreon, my LibrePay, my Ko-fi, etc. Um, and I will see you next time.